Hey, what's up? Hope you're having a fantastic day. And in this video, I'm going to give you a basic overview of how you can get going with the neural core cortex. Now, if you want to learn more about any of the particular features or settings that we're going to dive into, make sure you check out the link in the description down below for my neural core cortex ultimate guide, which will take you through every single setting that we will cover in further detail. So right now I have currently got a blank preset loaded in on my neural core cortex. Now the way you boot up a blank preset is easy. You go into the directory just by clicking on the title of your current preset, and then you can scroll through here through your different set lists. You can create new set lists of which you can have up to 10. And then inside of each set list, you can choose your preset banks. Now you have up to 32 preset banks inside of each set list, and each preset bank contains eight presets. So I'm going to, for example, go over to bank three, and I will start with 3A. So we now have a blank preset. Most of your time using the core cortex will be spent inside of the grid view, which is what you currently see right now on the touchscreen. The grid view allows you to add device blocks, manipulate your effects chain, add splitters and mixes, so you can route things to different destinations. And it also allows you to determine your inputs, your outputs, a variety of different things. This just basically gives you the overview of your current patch you have loaded in and how you can customize it. Now, before we create our own patch from the ground up and we start building it out, I first want to discuss some of the icons in the top right corner. Now, this little three dotted button will take you through to the system settings. Inside of here, you can see we've got a few sort of create new preset options, uh, a few MIDI out options we can save as, edit the details of this preset once we actually finalize it and create it. You can do your neural capture, all of that type of stuff. But we also have settings. So this takes you straight into your device settings, which on other manufacturers like Boss products, you would refer to as your system settings. So these are the global parameters that will be applied to everything on your core cortex. So you've got your device update, your disk space, so you can see how much gigabytes you've got free, all that kind of things. You also can adjust the device brightness too. I've currently got it set to one, so the camera can pick up this screen. Very useful. So that's what you can manipulate inside of here. If we head back into grid view, you can see we also have this option to change the foot switch mode. We can choose preset, we can go into scene mode, or we can go into stomp mode. So this just allows us to currently turn off our device blocks inside of this current patch we have loaded in. If we go to preset mode, this allows us to switch between our different presets, as you can see. And if we go into um, scene mode, this will allow you to have the same preset loaded in, but have different states of that same preset. So you can see how I'm switching these two blocks on and off at the same time. This just allows you to switch between different scenes on the quad cortex. Now I'm going to switch back over to preset mode. Now you can also change the mode by clicking these two foot switches simultaneously. So if you wish to do that with your feet while on stage, that is possible. I'm just going to go ahead and create a blank preset and create new. So to add a device block inside of grid view, you simply just tap on your effects chain. And then inside of here, you can choose through whatever device you wish to add. You can add your amplifier. So inside of here, you have a plethora of different amplifier cab sims. One of my favorites is right here at the top, which is the Brit Lead 900. You just add that in. If you wish to change its location, you just click and drag on the display. And then you also probably want to add yourself a cab simulator. So we're going to go into the cab. Go to guitar, you also obviously have cabinets for bass, just like you do for the amplifiers. And then you can choose your cabinet that you wish to use. I'm going to go for a four by 12 Brit Silver, because once again, this is one of my preferred ones on the Quad Cortex. And that's how you go about adding your device box. You can then repeat this process for adding your overdrives uh, and your delays, all that type of stuff, whatever else you wish to add to your effects chain. Now at the beginning and the end of your effects chain, you have got your input and output options. So you've got the input here, you can choose through input one, input two, you can also use the returns that are inside of the send and return tracks to also input put additional instruments. You can route it via USB, which is a very versatile feature inside of the studio setup, a variety of different things. I'm just going to choose input one, and then for the output, you have the same options. You can determine the output source of this particular row inside of the grid view. I'm going to go for output three and four, so I can use guitar jack cables with this particular setup. Now, as I just briefly mentioned, there are four rows inside of the grid view. So you have the entire core cortex is split up into four different rows. You've got row one, row two, 
three, and also four. Now you could have each row output to a different destination if you wish. So, you know, row one outputs through one, row two out of two, three, four, et cetera. If you were, for example, using uh, four different amplifier instances loaded in and your whole band was using this single unit, that is 100% doable. Now to modify the parameters of your device block, you just simply select the device block you wish to alter. And then inside of here, you have all of the different settings that you can tweak. Now you can use the rotary dials on the foot switches themselves. This is a way to do it, but I prefer to actually use the touch screen. I think it is much quicker. So if you just click and pull up on the screen, that will like increase the gain, for example, on this example. And if you pull down, this will decrease it. I just find this is a lot quicker to tweak rather than using these little dials on the foot switches, but that's just my personal preference. So you can go ahead, create your preset, whatever it is you want it to be, maybe reduce the gain a bit, and then you just click done. You can now go about the saving process of this patch. Now you see in the top right corner here, we have got this little uh, floppy disk icon. If we click this, this will take us into the save menu. So you can add your preset name, and then you can also add the tags. So for example, we will call this demo preset, And then for the tags, we could call this a variety of different things. So if you are in multiple different projects, for example, you may be in four different bands, you may call this the particular band name that you're in to basically match the preset with your bands for organization. So band one, band two, for example, that's what you may wish to do. Or the actual project or um, a, a album or whatever this preset is off if you're using this inside of the studio. So I'm just going to call this uh, band one, for example. So I'll call this band one, because you may be in multiple different projects, and I'll just click save. Now, if I go back into the directory, obviously you can see right now it has uh, successfully changed. If I go back into the directory and I search, and now I type in band one and click search, you will see lots of different presets have now appeared. We've got demo preset, which obviously we just created. And we also have test preset, which is a preset I created earlier. So I could actually choose test preset and load it in. And you can see that I have found my different presets by searching via the tag. So like I said, if you're in multiple different bands, you could find all of the presets you use with that particular band or in that particular CD or album that you've recorded in the studio really easily. Now, a few extra tips that you should definitely be aware of when using the Quad Cortex is if you slide down on your touch screen, this will take you over to your IO settings. Now inside of here, you can set your input level of your instrument, for example, you can set the output level of your XLRs. So, you know, you're not clipping the mixer or wherever the end destination is for that in particular. Um, but for example, something that is a little bit of a shame that you should be aware of, when you set your master input level on, let's say input one, we're gonna put it to full for some crazy reason, this is global. So if we were to then head into another preset, so we go over to bank three, for example, go back to our IO settings, you can see input one is still set to 60, which is what we just changed it to. Now, if you're obviously using multiple different guitars and they have different output on the pickups, one's got active pickups, so it's really hot. The other guitar is using single coil, so it's not as hot. Uh, you will have to change the input level every single time. Or you could do this. Now, a little bit of a workaround to deal with this is you could use input one exclusively for one instrument, so your, your Les Paul, and then on in input two, you could set this to be your Stratocaster. So you would have two different jack cables and you would use those separate for each guitar. But I just know on some other digital modelers that they have preset input preset setup that you can determine on each patch. So as soon as you switch patch, all you got to do is just plug your next guitar in and every, all, that done, all that work is done for you without you needing to worry about it. Now, if you swipe up on your touchscreen, this will take you into gig view. Now there's three different views for gig view. You've got preset, which allows you to obviously see all of the different presets you currently have booted in. You also have scene mode, which allows you to see the different instances of the particular preset you are currently using. And then finally, you have probably my favorite view, which is stomp mode. This gives you a very colorful representation of all of the different things that are currently mapped to your foot switches. So you've got our overdrive mapped to this foot switch and we can clearly see when that is on and when that is off. That's a very convenient view on the Quad Cortex. Now, if you want to see some more videos like this, make sure you check out the link in the description down below for my Quad Cortex Ultimate Guide. This is a full product guide that takes you through every single setting and explains what it's doing on the device so you can get the most out of your neural Quad Cortex. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.